from Target, please welcome Jason Forrester. Hi, good morning. Uh, so before I start, I just got to say, watching the presentations backstage, two thoughts come to mind. The edge matters, and it really is an exciting time to be in networking again. Um, so again, I'm Jason Forrester, and I own the open networking strategy for Target. And unfortunately, my colleague, Greg Stark, I'll introduce here shortly. He couldn't be here in person, so I'll show him on a video, and he owns the compute portion. So he'll walk you through our journey on that front. So for those of you who are not familiar with Target, we are a Fortune 500 company, and we're a, a global beloved retail brand. Uh, we've got roughly 1,900 stores in the US, about 50 distribution centers as well. We're about 350,000 team members strong. And every week, there's about 30 million guests that go see our stores. Now, you know, depending on if you purchase stuff online or in the store, there's a lot of tech behind the scenes that you know, powers that shopping experience. And so Target, for the last several years, has really doubled down on infrastructure, right? They built a team of amazing engineers. They built a team of pretty solid uh, data scientists. And those teams focus solely on how do they take open source, customize it, and adapt it for the retail use case, right? Um, combine that with the fact that Target has seen some unprecedented growth because of the pandemic, we've started to see pressure on the production environment that some of the legacy network infrastructure just couldn't quite keep up with. Like we're starting to see the edges of it. So because of that, we started down a journey of network disaggregation, which means for us, we wanted a network operating system that is completely open source. And we wanted a hardware ecosystem that allows us to pick from many ODM vendors uh, that offer network switches. And so when we started down this journey and, and tried to find out, well, where do we find these things, we discovered OCP was a place for us, right? Um, so I'm very proud to say we're the first major US retailer to join OCP. Now, there's a handful of tenants that we find ourselves very aligned with, uh, with OCP. The first is OCP and OCB technical solutions allow us to be, find designs that are more flexible, right? They allow us to pivot. As we learn, as we grow, as we go into different areas, uh, the infrastructure allows us to be flexible. Same thing from an efficiency perspective. So when you have 2,000 plus stores, uh, and 50 distribution centers, you, you got to run like a mini data center behind the scenes, right? So it was very important to us to find solutions that were highly efficient. And of course, the speed of target is a thing, right? We're constantly driving improvements into the environment. We're constantly pushing new tech. So we had to find technical solutions that allowed us to move quick. And of course, finally, ultimately, why we joined OCP is the OCP marketplace allows us to control our priorities and, and you know, focus on things that matter to us. So just starting to talk about the networking journey, um, we started like everybody else, right? We had a traditional black box environment, you know, very much a classical enterprise networking infrastructure. And then we moved to more of a open OS. So we deployed some open hardware with a semi-open NOS into a handful of stores. Right? We proved to ourselves that the hardware works and the hardware meets the needs that we talked about. And we slowly moved to more of a fully um, operating, uh, network operating system. And so we did that uh, starting with something called Sonic. Right? I'm sure everyone's very, very aware well of Sonic. So we poured significant investments into Sonic to be more enterprise ready. Right? So Sonic works great for the data center. It's got its roots in the data center. And the teams behind that have done a phenomenal job at building uh, data center fabrics um, or making Sonic ready for data center. So we've, we've poured significant investments in making sure Sonic was ready for the enterprise, right? So at the end of the day, uh, I'm proud to say as well that we've successfully deployed Sonic in a handful of data center fabrics, right? Um, it's withstand the production pressures of the target data centers. Uh, I'm also excited to say that we've successfully rolled out Sonic into a handful of our distribution centers. And then finally, what I'm most proud of is we've got Sonic running at the stores at the retail edge. And why is that important for us? is because it allows us to drive new tech into the stores. It allows us to meet some of our objectives uh, in an open way, right? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Greg so I can, he can share some of the open compute journey. Thank you, Jason. Sounds like some really exciting work happened on the network side within Target and our journey to OCP. 
Likewise, I wanted to give everyone a little bit of a sense of what our journey has been like within the compute and storage space at Target. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about what our footprint looks like and what deployments we have so far within Open Compute for Compute and Storage. So to give a little background on our architecture at Target, Starting about 15 years ago, we were probably in a state where most of our compute infrastructure was very proprietary. And this is fully proprietary across the entire stack, meaning the hardware, the operating system, and all of the management and tooling that went along with it. Oftentimes, like probably a lot of you, these were project-based architectures built based on what the application asked for or required. And then the entire stack was built from a single vendor. This did not allow for much flexibility and really required special purpose hardware as well as talent to own and deliver that environment. Moving up our arc, we eventually got to a mix of proprietary and OEM. And the big enabler here was Linux. With Linux coming on board, we were able to disaggregate the compute from the operating system. And this really allowed us to start taking advantage of virtualization as well as providing different OEM compute providers and storage providers. Our compute was based on a handful of different OEMs, but still utilized some of their proprietary tooling and management per vendor. At this point, storage was still largely proprietary with enterprise class storage arrays, providing an entire stack of operating system tooling and of course the hardware underneath. Today, we have more OEM hardware abstraction in that we have a finite number of compute specs that we fulfill through a handful of OEM providers. We've been able to further disaggregate the compute capabilities from our own in-house development management and tooling capabilities. On the storage side, we began to use open source software defined storage to also start abstracting some of our hardware from our storage capabilities within the block and object space. This has allowed us more flexibility and more commoditization within our configurations, as well as owning some or more of the control of how we provision, manage, and utilize our hardware. But this is only part of the arc. Where we want to move to is to be fully open from a hardware stack perspective, using fully accepted OCP configurations for both compute and storage. This will allow us to create more flexibility and provide an overall platform that we can build across all of our locations, our data centers, our distribution centers, and our stores. We plan to build this with fully abstracted capabilities for all hardware management, including alerting monitoring, zero touch provisioning, firmware management, and utilize the OCP community and projects to fulfill these needs. So let's talk about what the current footprint for compute and storage looks like at Target. As I mentioned earlier, today we do have two enterprise class three data centers. These both are located in Minnesota and house most of our centralized production and development applications within our hybrid on-prem cloud. Spanning these two data centers, we have roughly 7,000 servers. We have over 50 petabytes of enterprise storage. And we've also built a large data lake environment for our business analytics that spans about 65 petabytes. Throughout the last few years, we've also invested in an enterprise ma machine learning platform and GPU farm. Outside of our data centers, our edge locations are usually comprised of one of two types of locations. First of all, Target has over 1900 stores that span the continental US. Within each of these stores, we do have a local compute and storage presence. This is usually three to four physical nodes for compute and about seven to 10 terabytes of local storage. In addition to our 1900 stores, as Jason mentioned, we also have over 40 distribution centers throughout the United States. And each of these also has a local compute and storage footprint, spanning about four to seven server nodes and 10 to 15 terabytes of local storage. As we look forward, this will be our scope for our on-prem environment as we introduce open compute. So what has our progress been like so far? as we've gotten on this journey towards OCP. First off, early in the year, we started building our relationships with new suppliers. This included reaching out to some suppliers on sharing Target's OCP goals, what we're doing and why. This included building initial NDAs and master agreements with some of those suppliers so that we could start working through design and prototype environments. 
As for our first deployments of open compute in our data center, we are also building a new IAV layer. And these, this will be from the ground up with OCP configured nodes. We will be using Tioga Pass nodes with internal storage to start prototyping this environment as we build it. Secondarily, we also have a large environment that is made up of our, what we call our standard compute. And this is our target application platform or TAP as you may have heard of, which is our platform as a service that we've built. Underneath TAP, we build standard compute and we've started to deploy racks of this compute using OCP accepted configurations. Next up this year will be our edge and store locations. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a storage and compute footprint in each store. And we are looking at a prototype using the open edge configuration to start evaluating what this would look like in our stores. Again, we want to be able to enable a platform across all of our locations using OCP accepted gear. Outside of bringing in the hardware and validating some of our workloads on it, we've also started building some of our enablement capabilities. This includes our zero touch provisioning to take bare metal as it is racked and cabled and be able to configure it for our needs and our consumers within our platform. Also, we've built code around this to make sure that all of our security configurations are in place for both our internal SCML as well as any compliance that we need to do. We've also started working on onboarding and adapting our alerting and monitoring stack to these new configurations. With that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jason to provide some information on what we've learned so far within our open hardware, as well as our call to action as we look forward. Thanks, Jason. Awesome, thanks, Greg. So it's exciting to hear what Greg's done in terms of uh, open compute. Um, but on the networking side, uh, before we get into call to action, I definitely wanna call out, there's a session tomorrow at 11 in the expo hall to get in the details of the deployments. Uh, so a lot of exciting stuff there. You should definitely go see Pablo and uh, Arcus on that. But the call to action for us is, you know, we learned a lot during this process, right? It was definitely completely new. We were used to deploying OEM gear and to move to open hardware was a bit of a change for us. Uh, and one of the things I definitely wanna call out is from a hardware ecosystem perspective, the OCP marketplace has a rich offering for the hyperscalers, but I'd, I'd definitely like to see a little bit more focus on the enterprise. Uh, for example, you know, there's a lot of great 400 gig switches out there. Uh, there's a lot of great high-end switches, but we, we desperately need the one gig kind of lower PoE switch. So we'd love to see the OCP marketplace and the ODM community kind of focus on, on the edge and the enterprise side. Uh, Greg has some examples on the compute side as well that's uh, pre predominantly around you know, memory allocation and CPU allocation. Right? Uh, same thing in terms of how do we abstract away those minor differences in hardware that we, we do see in the OCP marketplace, right? Because this is new for us from a consumption perspective, uh, we would like to see a handful of maybe more tool chains or software improvements to make, uh, to abstract away the differences and make consumption that much easier. And then finally, I think there's a lot to be learned in terms of like just, just sharing battle scars and battle stories, right? Um, we ourselves at Target learned a bunch on how to go do this. You know, we hit some turbulence here and there. We got things right, we got things wrong. And so we'd certainly love to share the story and help accelerate the learning for folks that are going down the same path. And we'd love to hear from others as well. So with that, thank you.